Hey there, today we get to start our major review for this unit. It's, uh, we're in the grammar and composition, work text, Roman numeral four, page 182 and 183, master review units one through 14. So this, this will review um, everything we've done in the book so far. So it's quite a lot. So get out your book, turn to page 182, and we shall begin. Exercise F, we're talking about active and passive voice. Study the italicized transitive verb in each sentence. In the blank, label the verb as active or passive. Okay, so all of these verbs are transitive, meaning that the action is transmitted from one uh, noun to another. It means there's a complement in there. And then um, remember, active means that the subject's doing the work, doing the verb. And passive means somebody other than the subject is doing the verb. So let's look at the first one. A reception was given in honor of Mr. Johnson when he retired. Is the, the subject is reception. Is the reception doing any giving? The answer to that is no. Someone is giving, else that's not listed, is giving a reception. And then it's in honor of this guy, Mr. Johnson. So we don't even have the... The person that's doing the giving listed here. It's just an understood that it's being given by a general of people. So this one uh, is passive because the subject is not performing the action. Okay, so you do the rest of those four. Now we're talking about verb tense. Right, present, past, future, present, perfect, past, perfect, or future perfect for each verb. Include the emphatic or progressive form label when it applies. I went ahead and looked up the definition of all the tenses so that um, it, it begins on page 92 so that we can remember all of this before we get too deep into the exercise. The tense indicates the time of the action or condition expressed by the verb. There, It lists all the tenses here and then uh, present used to form the present tense. This is giving you an example. See, seeing, saw, seen. Um, and then on page 92, it lists example tenses of all of them. Okay, so you need to use 92. But my favorite part of this is on the next page, 94. It goes through and tells you when to use each one. Use the present tense to indicate an action that is occurring or condition that exists now in the present time. The present tense has special issues, and here they are, or special uses. Then use the past tense to indicate action that occurred or a condition that existed at some definite time in the past, some specific time. You use the future tense to indicate an action that will occur or condition that will exist in the future. The future tense may be formed by adding shall or will to present. And then five, use the present perfect tense to indicate an action or condition that was begun in the past and is completed in the present or is continuing into the present. The present perfect indicates the past action has some connection to the present moment. I find this definition to be extremely helpful because you can usually find past without a problem and present without a problem, but present perfect means it started in the past and is still going on now or is completed now. Tony has completed or Mr. Clive has been teaching math for 10 years. He's still teaching and he was teaching 10 years ago. Um, Tony has completed it means just now he finally completed this thing that he started in the past. Number six, use the past perfect tense to indicate an action or condition that was completed before some other past action. So past perfect is still all past, but there's something else that was completed after it. Mr. Stone had already bought the gifts before the sale started. So the sale started in the past, but even before that, Ms. Stone bought the gifts. She had been swimming for five hours when her crew sighted a shark. 
they sighted a shark in the past, but she'd been swimming for five hours even before that. I find that to be very, very helpful. And then use the future perfect tense to indicate an action or condition that will be completed before or before some other future action. He will have visited all the major cities before he returns. So he, his return is in the future. And then also in the future, but before he returns, he will have visited the major cities. They will have been traveling for nine hours by the time we awake tomorrow. So tomorrow, at some point tomorrow, we're going to awake. But before that, we will have been traveling nine hours, or they will have been traveling nine hours. So both are in the future, but the one that, um, but they will have finished, they've been traveling all that time before the nine hour, or before they return. So, or wake up, I guess was the question. I forgot what the question was. Anyway, here's the tense. Um, and then of course the progressive and emphatic. Um, emphatic is the word did. You know, yes, I did say that. That's emphatic. I'm, I'm serious about telling you that. And then progressive is ing. Had been running. So that means it's running. There's something that's con that continues. Ing progressive. It's progressing. All right. So let's look. Uh, right present past future present perfect past perfect future perfect for each verb indicate the emphatic or progressive label when it applies. Number one journeyed journeyed what do you think yeah that's simple it's past let's do another one is traveling well is indicates now right now that's present and then the ing in traveling indicates progressive okay you do the rest yourself Remember to go back and look at those pages. It's 92 and 94 are the two uh, most important pages for this one. I'll actually write it on here. 92 and 94. Okay. Uses in the sentence. Above each italicized word, write its use. Subject, verb, direct object, indirect object, object uh, objective complement. Predicate nominative, object of preposition, a positive and direct address, and adjective. Um, this would indicate a verbal used as adjective also. Remember verbals, verbs that are not being used as verbs. That would be um, infinitive, gerund, participle. And gerunds can't be used as gerunds can't be used as adjectives, so you know it's not a gerund. It would be either infinitive or participle. Joseph Lister became perhaps the most respected physician of the 19th century. We're supposed to write above every italicized word. Joseph Lister is the subject, right? Because that's what it's about. Became is the verb. Perhaps the most respected physician. What kind of verb is this? Yeah, so um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the list of verbs that can be. Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Became is one of those words in that list that can be both linking or action. So in this case, if is um, is a good replacement or was is a good replacement for Joseph Lister, then it's linking. So and then if, if not, then it's action. Joseph Lister was perhaps the most respected physician of the 19th century. That would mean that's a linking verb. Okay. Now, physician is what he became. That's the, the noun that followed. So that's predicate nominative. And that's the last of it. Okay. So that's how we're going about these. You do all of those. You've, been, you've had some practice on that. And then on page 183, exercise I. Put brackets around noun clauses. Remember, a clause contains a subject and a verb. Put parentheses around gerund phrases. Gerund ends in ing and is used as a noun. Underline infinitive phrases. Infinitive start with the word to and can be used as a noun, among other things. And above each clause or phrase, write its use. Subject, direct object, predicate nominative, object preposition, or a positive. So all of these are nouns. That's, you don't have to worry about that. All of these are nouns. 
So to excuse our faults on the ground of our weakness is to quiet our fears at the expense of our hopes. Okay, so you've got prepositional phrase of our hopes. At the expense, prepositional phrase. You don't do anything. Um, now, to quiet our fears, that to quiet is a, quiet is verb, right? Um, he quieted his children. Or he was, he was asked to quiet his daughter. Well, all right, so that is a verb. But it's got the word to in front of it, and it's being used as a noun here. So we need to, uh, it's, that makes it an infinitive. We need to underline it to quiet our fears. We'll worry about how it's being used in a minute. And then to excuse our faults is another one same, for the same reason. Um, on the ground of our weakness are both prepositional phrase. Is is a verb. Is is a linking verb. So this is the subject. This is a predicate nominative. Would you agree? I hope so, because that's right. Uh, the book says that we actually, the, the phrase to be underlined is all of that and all of this. And I agree. Because it's not just to, to use to to excuse our faults. It's not just the uh, subject. It's all of that. So all of that is all of this. Okay. Now you go ahead and fill out those. Let's go to exercise J. Use usage and diction. Cross out any words that are incorrect or inappropriate. It's a standard formal English. Only formal. So some things are right uh, are correct, but not correct in formal English and then write the correct words above them. So we're crossing out bad things, putting good things over the top of it. This is a different type ammo than that used by the forward anti-aircraft guns. Okay, remember there are two things on this. Two things. One, it says do not use type in place of type of. So that should be type of and then the second is do not use abbreviations for words that are supposed to be spelled out. A-M-M-U-N-I-T-I-O-N. So this is a different type of ammunition than that used by the forward anti-aircraft guns. Okay, so type of and ammunition on that one. Fill out all the rest of those. If you need, let me look up for you. Um, where that stuff can be found. It's in the glossary of diction section. Let me find it. Okay, it begins on page 175, the glossary of diction, and it's got all of those different words and rules, things not to use, things to use. It goes to 78, and then you've got some, uh, even before that, you got a few rules about diction, wordiness and trite and jargon and things like that. So you can actually start working, start looking at page 170 to get the answers for that, all right? And then lastly, exercise K. Diagram, love this, diagram the following sentences. You may omit ordinary prepositional phrases and single word modifiers. So single word adjectives or adverbs you can omit. Let's do one together. After being struck by hijacked airplanes, the World Trade Center towers collapsed on September 11th, 2001. Okay, so let's figure this out. What's the main sentence? It's the World Trade Center towers collapsed on September 11th, 2001. It always works better to label things. So towers is the subject, collapsed is the action verb. That's a preposition. All of, all of this is the OP, the September 11th, 20, 2001. Uh, World Trade Center, that's an, that, that is a, um, not a single word adjective, so we need to diagram that. After being struck by hijacked airplanes, um, so this is a phrase. What kind of phrase is it? Well, being is a, a verb form that um, is, ends in ing, but it's, it, it is not um, a gerund because that 
whole thing would have to be a noun if that's a gerund. So it's, it instead it's a participial, participial phrase. This after is um, a, a preposition. So actually, I guess this would be a noun. So being struck by hijacked planes would be, it would be a noun, that's a gerund. This is a gerund phrase being used as the object of preposition after is the prep. Okay, that's an adjective as well, the. Okay, so what we have is a prepositional phrase that has in it a gerund phrase. So kind of complicated. So we start giving ourselves plenty of room above and below. We start to diagram the main sentence. Towers collapsed. All right. So you have this, this prepositional phrase um, is telling you when it collapsed. This prepositional phrase is telling you when it collapsed. I'm not so sure that um, after being struck by hijacked planes isn't telling you specifically when on September 11th. So probably this prepositional phrase is a subordinate phrase to this one. That's how I'm going to diagram it at least. Okay, so. All right, let's look at the adjectives. Um, there are two, let's go ahead and do the, and World Trade Center, okay? So we got that taken care of. That's the World Trade Center. We've got towers, we've got collapsed. When did it collapse? Collapse on? Um, so we do I'm gonna make it nice and big. So on September uh, eleven, comma two thousand one. Boy, that's very that's just not nicely written. September 11, 2001. You know, um, and then after really should be here. I'm going to just extend it out. Got to make some room because we've got a gerund phrase going up here on a chicken foot. So let's do after and then on chicken foot, we've got a gerund phrase like that. And then um, we'll have by hijacked planes under here. The gerund goes across this uh, stair step. So being, B-E-I-N-G, and then a line, separate that verb from its complement, struck. Um, Yes, struck. Um, that would be a predicate. I guess that's a predicate adjective in this case, because it's describing. Um, 
it's just describing the towers. Anyway, that's how it's gonna, it needs to be done. Of course, I would rewrite that now. But anyway, that's the first one. You have two more to do on your own and you gotta look back on all the old exercises to determine, um, you gotta look back to determine, you know, the methods for diagramming each one of these things. This one might be kind of tough. Those two questions might be kind of tough, but do not get lazy. Just go ahead and look them up and try to figure it out, okay? Thank you very much. That's it for now. You go, you do those assignments and upload them and then we'll start. Uh, next time we're gonna start doing some uh, review of the assignments you've already done. So get those things done and turned in so that uh, I can turn them off and, and upload the next piece. Thanks, bye.